Okay, it's the moment of truth. Oh, that was so anticlimactic. In two weeks, I'm getting married, and with all the stress and the craziness of planning a wedding, I decided now would be the best time to take on the biggest project that I have literally ever done. I wanna create something big, special, goes along with the theme of the wedding. Jess's bouquet is gonna be made up of daisies. My name starts with a J, Jess's name starts with a J. So I'm thinking like a big photo backdrop, two massive J's covered in daisies. It has to have a little bit of a JBV creative touch to it. So the daisies are obviously gonna be moving. There's two weeks to make this happen, design, engineering, build. This is a crazy deadline. Honestly, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to make it happen, but we're gonna try anyways. Let's do it. All right, we are a couple days into the design process and it's become very clear that the balance between aesthetics and form, design and engineering, plays a role in every single decision I have to make for this project, starting with the flower itself. Originally, I wanted to use this design right here where the flower petals move up and down as the flower rotates. But there are gonna be a ton of these and our deadline is fast approaching. That means that we have no time for redos. So Engineering J took the win on this one. We decided to go with this static petal design instead. I could have designed the flowers to be completely flat, but Designer J wanted there to be some depth in the flowers. So we got some depth in the flowers. 3D printing rule of thumb states that overhang angles less than 45 degrees won't print properly. But I wanted to reduce the overall height of the flowers, so I chanced it and I opted for an overhang angle of 36 degrees. I test printed it and it showed that it printed completely fine, so I was ready to keep moving. It took a couple tries to refine the daisy, I made it a little bit bigger, optimized the thickness of the petals, but now we have something that we can work with. Time to make them rotate. The plan is to have the daisies chained together with gears. I briefly considered using a belt that wound through all the flowers, but with three days already down, I had to stick with what I have the most experience with and I've made some large gear chains in the past. The first thought was to have the daisies attach the gears that mesh directly to each other, but I quickly moved past this idea because this required massive gears as the spacing between the daisies is 120 millimeters. So I decided to link them with gears in between. Originally, I did think I was gonna be able to get away with just one gear in between, but that would mean that all the daisies are rotating in the same direction. Designer J really wanted the visual effect of the daisies rotating in opposite directions, so I need to add a second gear between each daisy to make that happen. I gotta say, this is a really stressful decision to make because we only have 10 days until the wedding and I just effectively doubled the amount of gears, posts, bearings, assembly that I have to do. But sometimes you gotta put aesthetics above everything, including your mental health. Yikes. <laughs> With the mechanical decisions made, it was time to build the first prototype. The small idler gears press directly onto the bearings, the bearings slide directly onto the posts, and they are C-clamped into place. The flowers are connected to the chain through these posts, which are held in place by thread-forming screws that screw through the petals into the center of the flower. Another thread-forming screw attaches the gear to the other end of the post and holds it firmly against the bearing. At first, I had the flowers arranged, so they had enough room to rotate freely like this. But then Designer J made the executive decision. He wanted the flowers to be nested like this, which added an additional challenge because now we have two different post sizes. When scaling to a larger 14 flower prototype, I quickly realized that two post sizes weren't going to cut it. Honestly, I thought I was completely doomed here. You didn't think it through, you dummy! But with a little geometric serendipity, it turned out that I only needed to add one more post length and this natural pattern formed, allowing all the flowers to fit without any interference. <sighs> Dodge the bullet there. Well, uh, let's actually put this thing together first before we say anything. Right, 14 flower prototype, done. Look at that. I can actually see the potential of this thing. I'm so excited. All right, back to work. The last thing I need to design are the big J panels, which I plan to CNC out of MDF material. I started with the basic outline. Each gear has to be spaced 100 millimeters apart from the others. This creates a pattern of triangles, which I was able to form into the shape of a J. 
Next, I added the holes for the bearings. I chose the cheapest bearings I could find on Amazon. The bearings are about 21.9 millimeters in diameter, so I undersized the holes by 0.05 millimeters to create a press fit. This means the bearings press or hammer into the holes and won't come out. Keep in mind, I've never press fit a bearing into MDF before, so this was an educated guess. Hopefully it doesn't backfire on me. Lastly, I added the pockets for the small bearing posts. I plan to 3D print these posts and press them in later. There's still some details I need to figure out, like how to mount these motors to the frame, how many motors I'm gonna need, how I'm gonna hang this thing, but I need to get this thing sent off to the CNC as soon as possible. So I added a bunch more holes to this thing and I decided it was future Jay's problem to figure out how to use those holes to mount motors. All right, Jay's complete, but we are not out of the woods yet. The final design comes in at 104 daisies. That means that I still have to print 104 daisies and post 308 gears. I have to get the panels painted. I have to put everything together one thing at a time. But I do think I'm gonna to need to get some help with the 3D printing. So I hopped on in the old Google and I came across this company in Toronto. Lifesavers. So while we're waiting for objects to finish working on those flowers, I'm gonna go pick up the J panels from the CNC and we can start painting them. Let's do it. In classic form, I flipped it before it was dry. Just gonna get this off. Maybe it'll come off, I don't know. Ah, oh, it's so annoying. Something I'm still learning, patience. Oh, yes. It's not bad. I kind of fixed it, but it's like, it's not great either. It was just so good before and now it's just like, now I guess it's, it's what I would have expected it to look like. I don't know. I guess we're gonna go with good enough here and keep moving. All right, the time has come to start officially popping the bearings into this frame. This is the part of the process that I was feeling the most uncertain about. If this doesn't work, <laughs> it's gotta work. It's kind of the theme of this whole video. We are running out of time and it's gotta work the first time. First one's in. 51 more to go. One down, and that is honestly a huge relief. I just got a call from Objects Unlimited. The flowers are ready for pickup, so let's go see how they turned out. Yo! Road trip! We are here at Objects Unlimited. This place is so sick. Let's go and take a look. Objects Unlimited is your one-stop shop for everything 3D. They have a full 3D design service and they can basically do every single type of 3D printing. They could do resin printing. They could do SLS laser sintering. They could do massive FDM jobs. You put your head in there for scale. They can even print things in full color. Look at this. This is crazy. That came off the printer fully colored like this. Mind is blown. Oh, these look familiar. What are these? So there are 104 daisies here, 104 stems. If I was doing this myself, I actually don't think I could have done this myself. Thank you so much, Objects Unlimited. You saved the wedding. It is Saturday. That means there are five days left until the wedding. <sighs> I really want to get this project done on Monday so I can like, you know, focus on other things like preparing for a wedding. We have 104 flowers to assemble right here. Luckily, I have employed Jess to help me make flowers. All right, let's get to work. Woo! Flowers done. I honestly am so surprised that we're done that. I thought we were gonna be here for hours and like this took like, not that long. An hour. Let's keep going. It's Sunday afternoon now. I was planning to get up today and just start crushing this project. And if it sounds like I'm in rough shape right now, it's because I am. There was a surprise bachelor party last night and that's all we're gonna say about that. I should probably not be operating any power tools. I'm probably going to anyways. It's easy to say the only thing left to do is do, but right now it feels very, very hard to do the do part. But the only thing left to do is do. So we're gonna do.
I'm literally just wandering around right now. <laughs> Let's get to work. My neighbors probably hate me right now. I, I even hate me right now. All right, bearings done. Let's do some posts now. I was gonna do the post for both of the J's and then put the flowers in, but I think it's probably best that I do the flowers on one and if something's messed up, then I don't have to do all that work on the other one. So let's start putting some flowers in. This project is really, really great if you wanna do something over and over and over and over again and then do all of that a second time. But it's worth it. So, we just ran into our first roadblock. That actually really what happened was I had this whole thing designed and tested for a thinner MDF. When I set this panel off to the CNC, they said that they could get this done, but only if we did it in half inch MDF. So that meant that I had to make a slight change to the post. I made the shortest post a little bit longer, but then I forgot to change the dimensions of the medium and long posts. Now that this whole thing is together, I'm noticing that the short flowers are knocking into the medium flowers. And like, it's, it's just, that's so frustrating. But not all hope is lost. I've already come up with a solution. I just finished printing some risers. The only problem is now is I have to take this whole thing apart, put the risers in, and then put it back together. Luckily for you guys, we can just do this. Done. As it turns out, I actually did change the dimension on the longer post, which means I only had to put the spacers into the middle length flowers and everything is spinning perfectly as it should. All right, tomorrow's another day. Good night, everyone. There's still a lot to do, everyone. It's game time. what's gonna happen. I wasn't expecting the whole thing to run off of one motor, but everything's connected. Let's see what happens. Yo. Yo. Oh. <laughs> I was actually planning to need eight motors to run this thing. But that's the thing is I, I had no idea actually what to expect. Obviously the only way to test the full version of it is to just full out build it. 52 flowers. There's 102 small gears and bearings on this thing. And it is honestly running so well. Whew. Okay. One J down. A whole nother J to go. We are headed to the venue. Honestly, I'm still kind of blown away that I've gotten this thing done in time. Jess, also too, blown away. See you at the venue. Everyone say hi to Kara. Hi. She brought the J's here. Thank you, Kara. And, oh no. Kidding. They're all good. Nice. Still works. Cool. Okay, the J's have been delivered. Now we have to go get ready for a wedding. It's Wednesday, it's the day before the wedding. I should probably be writing my speech right now, but instead I decided to punish myself and make 120 of these little keychains. Maybe I was just like really missing the experience of doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. We're having a great time now. Look at how cool they are. It's wedding day, oh my god. Okay, so I was about to leave for the venue and for some reason and last minute I was like, maybe I'll test the motors one more time. Plug it in, fry the board, fry the stepper drivers. No idea why, so I was just scrambling to try to make something work again. And I just want, this is proof right here, the motors are working. Look at this. See that, that's a motor turning. Motor turning, 
No smoke coming from the board. Okay, let's go to the wedding. It's hot. I think we're at that point in the day where I have to start transforming from engineer Jay into groom Jay. It's so weird to say that, but look at this thing. I really hope the electronics don't blow because I didn't bring any backup electronics. So either this thing's running or it's not, but it still looks good and that's what matters. Whew. Okay, it's the moment of truth. Oh, that was so anticlimactic. Is the power going to the extension cord? Oh, that's, I don't know about that. Oh my goodness! Oh, yep. Wait! Wait. Yes. Yep. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's amazing. Oh my god. But you need to help me carry stuff. It's working. Beautiful weather. Things are going great, so let's go get married. <laughs> That is what she just said. <laughs> so bad. She's so bad. It's so bad.